So welcome back everyone to my channel. This is uh, Promoting Safety Engineering and my name is uh, Shion Toby. And so this, I'm just going to continue from, uh, this is uh, the second video in the Learning How to Read PNIDs uh, series. So what we're going to be talking about, um, the prior video, I talked about the title block. I talked about the, that is the, the title block here. I talked about the legend for your PNIDs and then I talked about your process description and the process flow diagram and how they all tie together and how it's necessary to have those. They're like prerequisites to understand them before you start reading your PNIDs. So that's very, very critical. So that was the first. Um, so this is like a continuation. So welcome back to the channel, Promoting Safety Engineering. All we talk about is process safety, safety and risk, um, technical safety, you name it. We just talk about those those kind of things here. And um, so, yeah, if you like the video, please don't forget to like the and subscribe please liking it is very important it helps the youtube algorithm to make the videos more searchable always like them and as you join as you follow the channel so um today this what i'm going to be describing today i just want to give uh i'm going to go a little more in depth into the pnid is not going really page by page but just to give you an idea of how it is read and then also to also talk about how each equipment is described that's kind of these are equipment descriptions so how they are operating pressures operating temperatures design and stuff like that depends on how detailed the pnid is so that's what it's um it's kind of gives you an idea of what exactly um what exactly it's um is happening in the in the drawing in the drawing so um without talking too much because i said i always try i want to make short videos although the description I, there's a lot of explaining that needs to be done so we start from the pfd this is the process flow diagram everything happening in that facility this is it and for each equipment you're going to have a little description the equipment description of what the operating parameters are like you can see this v3020 this is it here so they're telling you what exactly is happening in the, or what, how this vessel operates. And when you go into your PNIDs also, you have a lot of that information broken down. So look at the PNID. This, this 302, V3020, that is it here too. And this is more in-depth explanation of it, although it's quite close to what was there before you have your e3020 if you come here e3020 and there's a description here for it where is e3020 yeah that's this and then you also have a description here in the pnid for it because that's it here and you have its description so what does this say actually look at it so this is v3020 hp knockout vessel it's going to give you the size outer diameter 48 inches the width the internal diameter and stuff it's going to give you the design uh, pressure at a particular temperature all those so this is going to be 317 bar design when you hear design and you hear operating it means this vessel was designed that means the maximum it can handle that it would before it starts messing up or before it starts um before it's you can say explode or before the internals gets messed up on in the instrumentation the maximum it can take is 317 bars at uh, 38 degrees so that's what it's been designed to do so you that operate that design you don't want to hit the design so let's say the well is coming in at um let's say 400 bar that means you are going to mess this up you don't want that um or it's going at um even 318 319 because what it's designed to take is 317 but the design is different from the operating the design is in case things get out of hand that's what it can take but the operating is 110 bar that means that on a normal day that's what it's supposed to be 
the pressure inside this vessel is supposed to be that's what it's operating at, and the temperature temperature should be 25 degrees if you do more than that it might be because of a process upset but so the thing is your instrumentations um let me go to the pni so you have all this um pressure trip pressure um you see temperature temperature transmitter temperature indicator level trip level all those are to ensure that when you are passing this it tells you something the, the alarms tell you or the indicators tell you in the control room or even right there that something is going wrong so you and that is the, the reason why the design pressure is or and the design parameters are much higher than the operating is because we don't want to hit this so when this starts going to 120 115 120 the alarms will start going off and everyone knows something is wrong because we don't want to hit this because once we hit this 317 then maybe you are seeing an explosion so that's and that's the same thing when you look at the classifier exchanger you have the um, operating pressure operating temperature operating um or operating temperature pressure you have all those written out it's good to have them on the pnid so that you can always monitor the 3021 okay that's here so this is a heat exchanger this is a vessel when time you see most times you see e or you all this you see an exchanger it means an exchanger i explained in the video before an exchanger is um something that either cools the stream or makes it harder so uh, after having looking at this now i want to just explain how this would run so and tie it to the pnid so this is the first part of the pnid we have your wells coming in well 17 t well 18 t well 19 t well 20 t we come here and that's on the process flow diagram and we come to the actual pnid after a while you won't need the um, process flow diagram unless you get lost so you can see them 17 t 18 t 19 t 20 t but this has a lot more detail this is the pnid is a lot more detailed than the pfd so just for these lines here these lines um, these four lines one two three four that's what we've expanded into this and it has so much instrumentation on it so you just they are almost all identical because um we have let's just say there are four wells and each is coming out from a well so it's the same kind of instrumentation on it so this the wells go from here through this i would still go more in depth into each page but it just flows through this through this all the way i will trace the line for you so it comes like this goes up into this goes up into the flow transmitter the um, pressure transmitter and goes all the way to train one and the same thing for all the lines now you would see that it goes to train one page zero 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 twenty which is the second page below so this is where it comes in from 20 so you have to remember that for and um if you look at uh so just so all those lines come in you can see gas from inlet manifold from page 00019001 which is this page here 00019001 so the flow comes in from there into this vessel which is what is showing here in the process flow diagram this is that line it comes in here so now from in there so this vessel here as it looks here is the same thing don't worry about how it looks but it's the same thing here so you have the flow going in now when you have a vessel what most times what vessels are for and that's why you see they're called knockout vessel what they just do is very simple they knock out water the, or liquid in it it means it's it wants to separate the liquid from the gas and when you have a combination a fluid that has liquid gas oil water in it when it goes into this kind of vessel here the liquid flows down to the bottom and the gas goes out the top so you have an, an exit 
with the fluids going out and the gas going out at the top that is just so when you see all those vessels scrubbers separators that's what they do they just split some separators with uh, there are three phase separators you can watch my videos on separators also they they separate the oil from the gas from the water because a lot of time when it comes out from the ground there's it's a combination of all three and with some sand and some impurities so it separates them so the gas goes upwards so this gas goes flows into the heat exchanger out and then comes out to the LTX. So we are now going. This is the gas stream. Remember, there's a gas stream, and remember, there is also a liquid stream going out at the bottom. So one um, goes to the classifier. Okay, yep. So look at these two lines. There's a line here. This line ends in 015. This line ends in 085. They have two different uses. So it goes out to the... So if you want to know the continuation for classifier, you go to page 21, where the liquid goes to. If you want to know the continuation for the where the gas goes to, you come here to go to page 22. So let's go to the next page. Um, this is page 20. So if we go to the next page, this is what... 21 so this is where the liquid comes to because you know we said it from here the liquid flows out to goes to page 21 and if you look at the lines here you can see three inches pf 2582 if you go to the next page you would see that line you can see that line here and you can see it's from hp knockout vessel from page 20-001 so it's telling you where i'm going this is where i'm going to this is where the stream is going to and if you come up back again to your process flow diagram you see the same thing it has gone out here and it's come into 3021 which is the same thing as here 3021 so which is just what this pfd is telling you the liquid the gas goes here and the liquid comes here the liquid first goes into 3021 before it hits this um vessel v the, the only difference is this is an e which is a heat exchanger and this is a v uh, a vessel so you go back to your drawing you can see the e3021 and you can see the v3021 so you can see the stream coming in the stream goes into the heat exchanger maybe it cools it maybe it makes it hotter all those would be in the process description or when you have a look at it you kind of have an idea so operating pressure 130 bar operating temperature 45 degrees and so um yeah this to the operating is 30 and 41 so it so the temperature has dropped a bit so it flows through this it goes into this vessel and it comes out here remember this vessel too would also drop off some liquid and this is where the liquid goes out X, um some goes to a drain some goes to another drain some the water prop okay so this is the hot water supply and this goes to condensate condensate to surge exchanger so this is where the real um flow that you are bothered about the process flow goes into all the other ones are the drains and hot water supply they are still important but that's this is where the main flow goes to and the gas which is still inside here because some gas will still get uh in here based on this whatever this heat exchanger does to it maybe it's made it hotter so some have vaporized the gas will go out to the top to the top to the ltx page 22 and the okay the condensate also goes to page 22 so yeah we go to page 22 and see where the gas stream um go where the liquid stream goes to so this is page 22 and if you also look at the lines you can see gas from classifier you can see hot water from this page 21 everything is coming from page 21 this is coming from page 20 so you go back okay so where is this line in page 20 i bet you will find it hp gas from choke exchangers on page 20 4 inch pg 2582 4 inch p in page 20 right 4 inch pd yeah this is it so 
that way you kind of have an idea of where everything it, it's pointing you it's telling you it's telling you a story that this is where i'm coming from this is where i'm going to sometimes there may be errors in the p and id but that's why you do has ups and that's why you have reviews to pick them up so you go and yeah you can see it's coming from here and it goes in choke and like that you have your hot water supplier from 20 uh, 21 2 inch wd this is 21 hot water supply 2 inch yes 2 inch wd hot water supply 601 hc Mm, where's that 601 mm, cannot find it but you kind of get the gist it's telling you that this is where i'm going this is where i'm going and those line numbers change but when you but mainly it's when there's some equipment in between or a valve in between like you can see this number two inch vh3 a one six six two zero two two inch v6 one a one six six two oh three can you see 66202 66203 is because of this valve here that that has changed and that's how they change to a lot because of what has happened just maybe because there's a valve or there's a heat exchanger or there's a pump in between like that like that so you go from here you've come to this is where on v3022 you go back to your pfd we are here now so just like that you keep on following the flow all the way to the end of the piano idea i will still break each page down individually but you kind of have a drift of where i'm going with this what i'm trying to explain that the piano id is telling you a story it's telling you i'm going this way i'm going this way and all these lines don't let them confuse you i explained they go left to right and they are telling you this is where i'm flowing to this is where i'm flowing to this is the page and this is the line number you trace those line numbers you trace the page page numbers after a while you get used to it but you just need some practice okay so that's it for today thank you very much uh for i would um of course continue the series i just wanted to give like an overview of how it's read how it's done so that you kind of have an idea so that you're not in the dark but going forward i would now settle down on each page and break it down and explain it if um, you have any comments or any ideas um please feel free to drop the comments let me know what's what's on your mind thank you very much once again this is promoting safety engineering the name is Sean toby please like the uh, like the videos and subscribe to my channel thank you very much do have a lovely one bye, -bye.